guys. Apologies. But Melissa, um, Melissa is a recent addition to our team. She's been an individual agent. She's under Tina Call here at EXP. Um, I've always just loved following her on social because I just felt like she was so good at posting homes and engaging with people. And uh, it's so funny. I was at the gym the other morning and my trainer was like, man, there's this girl on Facebook and she's got so many listings. And he show- I was like, who is it? I don't know who this person is. And, um, and he pulls up Melissa posting on a, on a Facebook group. And I was like, yes, I was like, that's amazing. Cause, uh, I know her and that is my listing. Um, so Melissa is just, she's a marketing genius. She's so willing to just kind of share her playbook, which is I think quintessential to our organization as a whole. Um, so when I've been watching her work, her magic, I was like, we have to see if she'd be willing to share, which of course she was. So, um, Melissa is a rock star. I'm going to turn it over to her. And um, we'll get rocking and rolling this morning. Thanks, Anna. I love that too, because when I post, all, when I do this Facebook marketplace, my friends are like, oh my God, you're killing it. You have so many listings. And I'm like, none of them are mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just posting other people. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm Melissa. Nice to meet you all. Um, so I started doing this back in, so I originally got my license in 2008 um, way before I had kids. And that was the worst time ever to get your license. I found out very quickly. Um, and so I wasn't in it very long. My husband was starting his own company at that time. Um, and we both have marketing degrees. He was starting an online marketing company. So um, I sort of shifted gears and helped him build his company, got out of real estate, was a stay at home mom for a long time. Um, and then really just got back into it in 2021. Um, and so I came across um, some YouTube channels that kind of taught me how to generate free leads on Facebook Marketplace. Um, and I'm still learning and I'm still sort of cultivating um, ideas and figuring out what works and what doesn't. But I'm just going to kind of share what I've learned so far with you guys. Um, so this is my, but wait, who am I? Um, so just really quick, a little background on who I am. Um, I'm originally from Pennsylvania, um, born and bred in Southern Lancaster County, which is about an hour from Philadelphia, but close to the Maryland line. Um, I went to college at Kutztown University, which is near um, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Got my degree in business and marketing there. Um, I ran track in high school and college hurdles, which would I would kill myself doing now. Um, and now I live in Fuquay, and we've actually been down here since 2005. So this is definitely home for us now. Um, my husband and I will be married 20 years this June. Our son, Quentin, is 13. So he goes to Herbert Aikens Middle School. He's in seventh grade. Um, he swims on a year round team and he runs my daughter, Violet is at Ballantyne elementary. She's in third grade there. And she's my little gymnastics girl. She's on a gymnastics team and she does summer swim team. Um, and then we have three pets. We have a boxer named Eleanor and we have two cats, Lucy and Molly. Um, and then this is just a picture of me in my happy place. This was a girl's trip about a year ago in Sedona, which is my happy, I love to go to their place. Ooh, me too. All right, let's get into it. So um, the way that I choose listings most of the time to put on Marketplace, um, I just go for EXP listings. That's the easiest because I know I can share those because they're our brokerage. Um, so I keep a saved um, search in my MLS that is just exp listings that way i can just go in pull up that saved search um and then i can manipulate it however i want as far as location and price point and all of that um so i'm sure all of you know how to do this but down at the bottom if you just put in at the as the listing office exp it'll bring up all the exp listings in our mls um and then over here what I like to do in reports so that I can view them all at the same time is I go to MLS default grid. So that's going to put it in that like listed list report. So you can just scroll through and look at them all and compare them. 
Um, in my experience, the best ones to choose are the newer ones. So always look at days on market. Um, be careful because as you know, if it says zero, sometimes, a lot of times, it's going to be because it's new construction. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's new on MLS or it's going to be new to um, a buyer that they haven't seen it before. So I don't usually, sometimes I'll throw in a new construction, but I don't usually use those because people have probably seen those already and they're going to scroll right by them. Um, so I try to get the newer listing posted in Marketplace um, so that it's it's the person's first exposure to that listing, if that makes sense. Um, the only time I will post something that's maybe been on the market is if there's a price reduction, because that might mean that the, it opens it up to a new client. Um, so if it went from, you know, let's just say like 410 to 395, that's opening a whole new price range. So that's opening a whole new, you know, target market, for example. So days on market, price reductions, those are the first two things I look at. Um, when you're first starting, at least, I would only do three to five listings at a time um, because what you'll find is you'll become inundated with people messaging you. And if you have too many listings up, you, you will, you'll become overwhelmed. You will not be able to get back to everybody. So just to kind of get your feet wet, I would start with three to five posts in Marketplace and just kind of see what happens. Um, and after a couple of days, if you're not getting anything on, on one or two of those, just delete them. Maybe put up something else. For whatever reason, those just weren't the ones. Does, any, does that make sense to everyone? If, if you guys need to jump in, if something isn't making sense, you can interrupt me. Yeah, Answer. Samantha asked, do you reach out to the listing agent to ask if it's Always. okay to put their um, listing on Facebook Marketplace? Always. If it's a team, if it's a team listing, like I'm on Anna's team, I know she's okay with me sharing them. If it's not, um, then I'll ask, I'll ask the listing agent. Um, I have, I usually stick to EXP. If there's a listing from another um, office or another brokerage that I really love, that I really want to post, then absolutely 100%. Um, and I say this later in the presentation, but I always, always, always give credit to the listing agent in the description on the post. Always. That's a good question. Thanks, Samantha. Um, so when you're in that MLS default um, that I pointed out up here, the MLS default grid, <laughs> you can <laughs> click on the pictures and save them. So what I like to do is create a folder on my desktop and I will name the folder the street address so that I can remember what I have posted. That makes it really easy for me to like check MLS to make sure it hasn't gone pending. Um, there hasn't been a price reduction because I don't, I want to make sure I keep up with that stuff and everything on Marketplace that I have posted is accurate information. Um, I cannot stress this enough. Only put three or four pictures on your post. It's really hard sometimes, especially if you put um, some of like the seven or $800,000 houses because there are so many pretty pictures and you want to put them all. But your goal here is to get someone to engage and to ask questions and to want more from you. And if you give them everything, then they're not going, they're, there's nothing that they want or need from you. So only put a few pictures that are going to get them interested. Um, I usually will use the front of the house because people want to know what that looks like. And then um, people love to see the kitchen. If the kitchen is less than desirable, then I will skip the kitchen um, and I'll do something else that looks nicer, like maybe the outdoor space, the living room, um, a bathroom, bonus, something like that. 
So just a couple of pictures. Um, I save those pictures in that folder on the desktop and then I'm ready to post. So um, a little tip when you're posting, have your MLS open and have all of those um, houses that you're going to be posting open so you have all of the MLS info for you right there. Um, so for those of you who don't know how to do Marketplace, when you're on Facebook, over on the left-hand side under your profile, you'll see Marketplace. I circled it right here. So you're just going to click on that. It's going to take you to the Marketplace page. You're going to go down right here and click on create new listing. Once you do that, it's going to ask you what type of listing this is. So since you're doing a house, you have to do the home for sale or rent. If you try to put it in item for sale, <laughs> it'll catch you and boot you. So always do home for sale or rent. Okay, so um, I didn't put all this because it's pretty self-explanatory. Once you do that, it's gonna ask you, it's gonna let you upload your photos. You can put them in any order you want. Um, I usually start with the front of the house as my first photo because that's what's gonna show up when people are scrolling. And then if they click on it, they can scroll through the photos. Um, once the listing has been up, for a week, I always go back and kind of check and see what kind of traction it's getting. I might rearrange photos because then it makes it kind of look like a new listing. But I always usually start with the front of the house for people. Um, and then it's going to ask you um, list price, bedrooms, bathrooms. There's some information you have to put in. I only put in what I have to. And then for the description, I, it's a, it, it depends on a couple of things. So I've done it both ways and I gave you here sort of um, the two that I do. So this is my shorter one. If I'm in a hurry, I do my shorter one. Um, I just put something quick, like for sale in Apex. You will sometimes get people, I don't know how it's not self-explanatory, but you will get people who say, is this for sale or rent? Even though it says $450,000. <laughs> That's not per month, people. So, but you'll get people who ask you that. So I always put for sale right there at the top. Um, and then I always put my contact information right away. I have never, ever, ever had someone call me or email me from Marketplace. They always direct message me right from the listing. Um, but I still always put it there because you just never know. And then I always, like I said earlier, give the listing agent credit. I always say listing presented by their name and whatever brokers you're with. I always do that at the bottom. Um, so if you want to put more information, which I do this sometimes. And again, I check on these uh, once a week, one to make sure they haven't gone pending or sold um, or price reduced. And so I'll update them if they have. Um, and two, just to see how they're doing. If no one has clicked on it, then I'm done with that one. That's just not gonna be a popular one. Um, if people are clicking on it, and I'll show you how to check that, but maybe they're not engaging for some reason, then I'll switch some things up. Like I said, I'll switch pictures up um, and then sometimes I'll switch up the description. So this is like my longer description. I'll just give them a little more information that might get them excited about the house. So here I just added, this is a move-in ready five bedroom. Here's some cool features the house has. And I added my contact information a second time. Um, so my schedule, I think I said this a couple of times, but I do check them every week. Um, I will delete out the listings that are not getting clicks. So when you go, I'm going to scroll back up here really quick. When you go to marketplace and it takes you here, right above where it says create new listing, you can click on selling right here. That will take you to what you are selling, what you have listed. 
and then that takes you here. So this is this is actually what I have up here right now. Um, this one right here, it has marked as available right here because this house is actually pending. So I have it marked as pending. These three are um, still active. So I circled, it it's telling me right here how many times this has been viewed by how telling me how many clicks it has. So this one, this second one has been clicked on 193 times. If I click on this, it will take me to any um, Facebook Messenger conversations that I'm having about this house specifically in a list. And then I can click on them from there as well and just see what those, those messages are saying, what we've said to each other. So this is helpful for me because if I see, oh, I have 193 clicks and then I click on this and I have one person out of those 193, that's a terrible conversion rate. So that's telling me people are clicking on this house because they like something about it. They love the price, they like the picture, they like that it has five bedrooms, something. But then once they get in there, they're not interested enough to reach out to me. So I can kind of dig deeper and try to figure out what it is. I can maybe change pictures up um, and see if that does anything. And then I can come back in a week and see if that's changed anything. Um, so that's that. A couple, of, these are just a little, some things that I've learned over the couple of years I've been doing this. So the ultimate goal is to get these leads into your CRM. So I always am trying to get an email address from these, from the people that reach out to me. So I always want to rep reply really quickly to them. You will get some people that are looking late at night or in the middle of the night and you'll get messages. If I'm up at 11 o'clock at night and I get a message, if I'm in the mood, I'll write back. If I'm in like the middle of watching TV, I don't write back. So that's sort of personal. Like you, you have to set your expectations, right? If you don't want people replying back, then don't reply to them at 11 o'clock at night, right? Um, but reply to them, you know, quicker than like three days later because they'll go somewhere else. Um, I have learned this and I just learned, I, I learned this a long time ago, but I relearned this lesson last week. Ask them if they are working with another buyer's agent. Um, I always tread lightly because I don't want to scare people. I don't want them to be like, oh my God, she's going to make me sign something. I'm just going to lie and say yes. I always say, um, hey, I'm happy to send you more information. As long as you're not already working with an agent, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. So it's just, you know, me being gracious and, and having integrity. So I, I kind of do it gently. And my experience is people take that well and will usually be like pretty honest like oh no i'm not working with anyone yet um and then people are pretty open to giving you their email address for more information um i only find a small percentage of people push back on that um and so when they ask me nine times out of ten when you do get a message it's going to be is this still available so my response is always um, you know, yes, this is still available. I'd love to send you more information. Um, do you have an email address where I can send that to? And then normally you either get no response because sometimes people click on that by accident or I don't know, they just moved on and gone somewhere else or they'll give you their email address and then they go right in my CRM. Melissa. Yes. Do you, um, so like, say it's your listing or, or let's say, okay, well, one, do, do you may have already done this. Do you reach out to the listing agent to ask permission to do this, or it's already within your EXP world. So you just kind of just, everything's good. If it's EXP, I will, I just, put, I will just post it because it's, okay. it's under the EXP brokerage. Okay. Okay. But anybody else it's a, you've got to ask. Okay. Got it. Um, yeah. if you're, let's say you're hosting an open house on yeah. a property. And it's not your listing, it's Anna's listing, but your host or whatever, somebody else's listing and you're hosting an open house. Do you make an 
a new post for that? Or do you update your post to say open house to try to see if there's any extra traction or to try to like get traction to the open house? Yes, I will do that. And I also will create an event on Facebook for open houses. Good. Yeah. Awesome. It is smart. So you did. Um, where was I? So building trust and rapport, that's just um, asking them questions. People love to like tell you their story, get them talking. If someone won't give me their email address right away, if they're kind of ignoring that question, um, I won't keep hounding them for it, but I'll just say, you know, um, how long have you been looking or just try to get them talking and feeling comfortable. Um, and then if they're not responding, which happens quite often, I, I don't keep messaging them like every single day, but I will follow up every couple days just to see if they have questions or if there's anything I can help them with. Um, so don't, I never, ever, ever, ever give them the address for free. So people sometimes will say, well, can you just send me the address? Did you want me to know. down myself and you'll bring the box when you're done? So sometimes you people say, well, I, wanted, I just want to go drive by it to see if I like the area. Well, you know, make up whatever you want, but no. <laughs> You can't have the address for free. Sometimes I'll say, you know, well, I don't have the listing agent's permission um, to just give the address to someone who is not my client or whatever. Um, I, you know, like I, we, we can't like that seller that that's owner occupied. So we can't just have people like dropping by something like that. You have to, you have to schedule a tour if you want to go by the property, something like that. Um, don't pummel them with questions. Remember it's messenger. Um, so don't be too wordy in Messenger. Make sure it's like a back and forth conversation. I never send them more listings through Messenger. They need to be in my CRM. They need to give me their email. It always comes back to that. Um, and really, this is this is more of a safety thing too. Just never agree to schedule a showing with them without vetting them or qualifying. And again, that's getting their email and and getting some more information from them and vetting them a little bit. Never just say um, without getting that information. Because I sometimes you have scammers and, I, and they'll say, hey, can I schedule, can I go look at this? Can we look at this today? And then when you start to ask them for information, then they disappear. That's usually when you know that they're not legit buyers. So just be careful with that too. That brings us to our red flags. So these are just like two examples of things that happen often. Someone will say, can I see the house today? I ask for their phone number so I can give them a quick call because I want to vet them on the phone. Um, anything other than a willingness to take a quick 10 minute phone call from me is a red flag for me. Like if they will not take a 10 minute phone call for me to schedule a tour if they really, really want to see the house, it's kind of a red flag for me. Um, this one, again, asking for the address, me telling them I'd be happy to send you more information. Um, this kind of goes into asking them as well if they're already working with an agent. If they say yes, we all know that people will just say that sometimes because they don't want you asking them to sign something. So if they do say yes, I'll always tell them, okay, great, um, who are you working with? I'll send over the MLS number to them and let them know that you're interested in more information about this property. So they know that I'm going to take control of this and give your agent the information. Um, always check their Facebook profile. So when someone messages you in Messenger, you can click on that and it'll tell, it'll ask if you want to view their profile. A lot of people have their profiles set to private, but there are still little ways that you can kind of detect if it's a fake profile. And so these are just a couple examples. If it says they live in some obscure country, most of the time they're probably not buying in Fuquay Verena <laughs> or like Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, if it says they live locally, but you scroll through their page and there's 
nothing local about anything they ever post. Everything is in a foreign language and in a foreign country. That's probably not a real profile. Um, if the profile seems, the picture seems like it's like a magazine photo, it probably is. You can actually do a reverse image search if you save that photo and then plug it into Google and you can see if it was just snatched off the internet. Um, and then if there's very little timeline activity, um, a lot of times it's because they just created the profile and they're some sort of scammer. So just be careful with that as well. Um, and so here's, these are just a couple of my stats from Facebook Marketplace alone. So like I said, I started this in 2021. I was not super consistent with it. Um, I'm, I'm like a, I'm like a impatient, let's, if this is not working, I'm moving on and I'm learning that that's not how it works in real estate. So in 2021, I was not super consistent. So overall, I went back and, tr and tried to look, but a lot of those conversations are archived now, so it's hard to find them, but I definitely could tell that I, I got about seven legit clients that year from Marketplace. Um, that was a weird year because that was my first full year back in real estate. Um, and that's when things were were hard, when multiple offers, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 above list price with what you had to do. So that was tough. But I did have one seller closing and one buyer closing from Marketplace. Um, I also can attribute one other seller closing in 2022 from a neighbor coming over to an open house I did for, for my seller here. Um, I had one renter. I had three legit buyers that we made multiple, multiple offers on things, and they just did not have the cash reserves to compete in that market. Um, so they ended up deciding to wait and then they, that's my peace out ghost. That's what happened. I've never heard from them again. Um, and then one other buyer ended up buying straight from her landlord who refused to work with a real estate agent. So I got cut out of that one. So legit, legit leads. That was just like a funky year. Um, in 2022 and 2023, this is me. I kind of had one foot in and one foot out. Um, I was back to helping my husband a lot with his business. So I wasn't doing, I wasn't a hundred percent in on my business. So I wasn't doing marketplace ads really at all. Um, and now just back in 2024, now we're back. So I started these back up in like mid January. Um, I need to go through my CRM and like check all my tags. I just did it super duper quick yesterday when I was finishing this slide up and, um, the ones that I do have tags on, I counted 22 that I've added from mid January from marketplace, um, leads. I have one, I have one buyer right now going through pre-approval, which is a solid pre-approval. I talked to a lender yesterday. I have two that are both seller and buyer leads that I have listing proposals that I'm working on right now for them. Um, I have one buyer who's, who's had a home tour thinking about making an offer. And then I have three other buyers that I've been talking to on the phone and we're working on um, getting them through the pre-approval process as well. So um, it, it's a lot of putting people on drip campaigns, um, but there are definitely like legit leads that come through that are, that are ready, ready to go right now. So, um, and that's, that's about it. I'm, it's still, I'm still learning what works and um, figuring it out, but it's a, it's a good free, free lead source for sure. This any is awesome. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I have one question. Have you ever had someone, um, either your own client on a listing say, Hey, I don't want my home on Facebook marketplace, or 
you uh, put it on from like someone else in EXP and then you heard from the agent and they were like, hey, my, my seller's freaking out. They don't want um, it on Facebook Marketplace. No, never. Awesome. Okay, cool. Never. Ryan, you know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like you just do it without talking to me sometimes. I mean, right. <laughs> Yeah, Catherine just made that comment. She's like, you know, if you've got a seller that maybe is older or, you know, a little bit more private or whatever, they might feel, you know, some kind of way about it. And so yeah. it might just be the courtesy as part of your, it could also be something that you go into your listing presentation with. Like, yeah. hey, we don't just market the normal ways. We don't just put it on MLS and let it syndicate. Like we actually uh, take a more active instead of a passive approach. And we put this on, um, Facebook marketplace. And we're actually getting a ton of traction and really show, show the stats. And yeah. for anybody that's watching this guys, like, you know, if we're all on the same network, we're all learning from one another. You can say like, you can use Melissa's stats. Like actually here's a 2024 stat that another agent in our, in our world used. And she's gotten 22 leads into her CRM since X, Y, Z. So flip, flip the script and make it seem like a positive thing because it is more exposure. Um, there's a lot of statistics that, um, Facebook, the, the average age of people using Facebook is actually creeping up. And so I think that the last time I saw it, it was like 55. And I think a lot of people assume that it's like people in their early twenties. Um, but on yeah, but they're onto like TikTok and Snapchat and all those fun things. <laughs> right. And so, um, our target audience is actually, you know, the people that are, you know, 45 to 65, they are looking, um, on Facebook and Facebook marketplace. And that's where a lot of, a lot of these legitimate leads are coming from. So I would say, use it as, use it as a marketing tool, talk about it, um, and bring it up, especially if you've got a client that might be a little finicky about, about it and just help them educate and understand the process. Yeah. And I always, I always in my listing appointments, especially having a marketing background, um, talk about social media and really play up social media a lot because the majority of buyers now, they, they either start their home search before they even have an agent, just looking online to find out what's out there and, and what they can get for, you know, their price range, or at some point during their home search, they start to look on social media and online. So at some point, um, you know, you want your house out there on social media to be seen. And so I, I play up social media as a big part of my marketing package. Um, and I've gotten a lot of good, positive um, feedback from, you know, all ages. Um, hey, Melissa, I have a question. Feedback. Yes. Um, has the listing agent ever said, um, well, I'll just do that myself? Um, no. And you know, they could, they could do that themselves too. And I don't think, I don't think that it necessarily hurts if, if, the, if you had, both do it, if you both do it, because it's, it's the algorithms of, of Facebook, different people are going to see it. If that makes right. sense. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Melissa. Hi. Hi. Um, so for open houses, how do you schedule the event? I mean, um, are you scheduling it several days in advance, the day before, the day of? Just would love to know like how that works really well for you. Um, so usually I will do it. So for example, um, I'm doing an open house. I'm trying something a little different <laughs> because I'm going to be away this weekend. Um, and one of my teammates has a house going up um, today that is right around the corner for me. And I so I wanted to be involved. So I'm doing an open house tomorrow. I'm doing two like early bird open houses, like a midday and an evening. Um, but I couldn't advertise until today because it's going live today. So I just put up an event this morning on Facebook. But normally I will do it um, two to three days in advance if I can. Um, and yeah, I just go in, if you go into your um, Facebook, like right on the left, right where Marketplace is, there's an event as well. Okay. Click on events. Um, you can make the header picture, a picture of the house, um, put open house, and then you just put in all the information like you normally would. You can put a start time, end time, all of that. And then you can make it public. It'll ask you like, do you want this just to be seen by your friends? Or can this be a public event? Uh, and then you can actually, it'll ask you if you want to invite people 
Um, so you don't have to, but if you do want to go through and like pick, you know, people that are local that it will get sent to, you can do that as well. Um, but I've definitely, when I made it, when I make it public, which I always do, I have had people show up to open houses and they say that they saw it on Facebook. Yeah. On the events, because people will go to event the event page to see what's happening, you know, this weekend and see things like that. No, I love it. And when people come in at the open houses, I always ask them how they found yeah. out about the open house. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. This was awesome. This was, this was wonderful. Um, yeah. And we will make sure that we have this recorded and we will have this uploaded to our agents empowered site as usual. And Anna and I will get this uploaded to our YouTube channel as well. Um, do, do we have any other um, final questions? Okay, guys. Well, Anna and I are always here for you. If you need anything, feel free to reach out. Melissa, this was Amazing. We actually have people in our office that are already doing um, their post right now. <laughs> awesome. Um, awesome. Yeah, it. we're going to, and we'll report back. We'll, we'll, I would yeah, love actually too. everybody that's on, I would love everybody to come next week. We've actually got Eli Harris um, presenting next week, I believe. And I'd love to kind of do a tally in the morning of, of all of the leads that people got from this in a seven day period. Yeah. I think that that would be something really cool to report back on. Yeah, for sure. Facebook marketplace challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's do it. That would be so fun. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, guys, thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks, thanks, Melissa. Guys. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Have a Bye, great guys. Wednesday. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Melissa. That was awesome. Thank you. Thanks, thanks guys.